excuse me. Uh, hello and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode number 107, a prime number episode. Um, and uh, um, brought to you every Friday at 12.05 Eastern. And uh, welcome, Hayden. Uh, always good to be here, Anton. Um, and uh, I think we have a good tip for people today. Yeah, I'm sure it will be a, a prime tip. Uh, so I had uh, I had thought, oh, wow, it's a prime number. Isn't that unique? Uh, it turns out right around 100, uh, there are a lot of prime numbers, 103, yeah. 107, 109, 113. Um, yeah. <laughs> but we can enjoy, enjoy it nonetheless. But yeah, uh, we'll eventually get out of this cluster. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, I have a little... Um, uh, off topic tip after our real tip, but I'm actually, um, this tip that we're doing right now is really good for me. Um, because I actually, um, I, I knew about the second part of the tip, but not the first part. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so I'm, I'm using it already. So with, with, uh, no more than that hidden, what, what do we have? Yes. So let me go ahead and share my screen. So it's about session overrides and, um, this has been covered in uh, several blogs and uh, an Apex video. Uh, we'll link to all of them. Um, I think we're going to cover something slightly different um, than what has already been covered elsewhere. Right. And so, it's this first part that, that I didn't know. So let's, let's do this and, uh, and yeah. let's go. So um, I've got an application that um, has a demo.js file uh, that is uh, currently running. And so the question is, how do I edit? And that's in your application? static applications files, right? It's in my static applications file. So th the question is like, if, if I want to develop this JavaScript file, what is the correct way to do it? Uh, certainly an obvious choice would be to come here and uh, uh, type whatever you please here. Uh, why might this not be a good idea, Anton? Well, I think there are two reasons. The first is anything you do in here will, and when, as soon as it changes, will affect everybody in this environment. So if you've got a shared development environment and you break something, which if you write JavaScript the way I write JavaScript, you are certain to do, even if it's just an alert statement, um, you're going to break it for everybody. Um, yeah. So it'd be great if you could develop it on your own. Um, but the other thing is it does take a little bit of extra time to hit save and wait for the browser. It, you know, it's, it, coding in the browser is uh, you know, not ideal. Um, yeah. So for, for those of you who want a better option, here are some choices. So uh, the first uh, choice I'm going to present actually has nothing to do with Apex. Um, uh, you can identify, and all most browsers will have this, uh, you can come to the override section here in Chrome, select a folder for overrides, and I'm going to pick my downloads folder. It asks me to allow it, I'll allow it. And then um, back here, I can select my demo.js file for overrides. And as a consequence, uh, when I come back to my downloads folder, I can see that a new folder has been created for me right here. It's kind of ugly looking, but if I were to switch into it and open it up, I can see that there is a demo.js file here and I can in fact edit it. So you're already better than me, there's that, no error. And at, at, I do a uh, shift refresh, shift uh, clears the cache, and I get the, um, the, the change that I, that I saved locally represented in the browser. And that shift is a, a key element. So, yes. all right. So if you're not going to do it this way, what's the way that people normally, when they have this exact conversation, show? Yes. So, and, and this is a, a good method that you may still want to hold on to. So let me get rid of this. Okay. So um, the... Uh, the the better method might be, uh, so the real downside to this approach is it creates this ugly folder structure. So uh, a better method might be to use um, the Apex provided utility called session overrides. And if you uh, turn it on, um, you're invited to pass in something here that uh, repoints anything that currently points to this substitution string to whatever you have locally. So you, it does mean that you need to um, host something on your local server. So you need to figure that out. There are a couple of ways to do it. Um, uh, Plumman has a blog um, about using the VS Code live server plugin. It's a great option. I happen to use something slightly different. Um, so uh, you do need to, uh, um, let me actually 
clear some of this out just for the sake of confusion. So remove that. Okay, so now I've cleared my downloads folder. So uh, now um, I can uh, replicate set, uh, static application files locally. I'm going to download it all as a zip. I'm going to. So you downloaded it, you extracted it, and now they're all right here. Yeah. So so now I have everything I need to code, and in the final minute. Um, uh, I'm going to use an NPM library called um, NPM, sorry, HTTP server, which will uh, make all of this available at this location, which I can then pass into session overrides. So you can just install the NPM HTTP server on your Mac or on, on your PC, run it in whatever directory you run it in, it will make that available. That's right. And uh, now, um, just as before, I can add my little alert here to prove that I am, in fact, editing the actual file. And I, I do a shift refresh, and I get my alert. So um, to quickly acknowledge uh, some things that I might have glossed over, as you said, Anton, I can. So to, to install uh, HTTP server, I can do npm install. HTTP server, and I recommend installing it globally. So that's it's it's pretty easy to do. Um, and then uh, for the um, uh, for the live server thing, we'll link to Plumman's blog, and he can show how to do that easily using VS Code. Great. Um, I have to say, I love it that we showed Louis something. Um, so uh, I. Uh... <laughs> Anytime I can, I can uh, show something to Louis uh, in this space, I'm excited. Uh, so thanks for that comment. Um, and also, uh, I'm, it's fabulous to have Vincent on our little show. Um, yes. and Vincent has an excellent five-minute video also on the same topic. Uh, I, I uh, will link to that as well. Um, I, I chose to also cover this because um, Vincent's uh, tip is about um, uh, this, other details about this utility. Uh, one question that people might reasonably have is if I'm coding, say, a plugin, um, uh, your plugin CSS or J uh, JavaScript files don't point to e either of these three um, locations. So and this is specifically what I learned from you, Hayden, to use the, the other technique because I'm writing a plugin with JavaScript files right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah. yes, I, I think the, the, the best way to my personal method for handling that challenge is to use the the method of session overrides using my chrome um browser but uh, certainly there are tons of options in this category um uh if you have other recommendations please let me know yeah um i'm like i said the, i always love it when one of these tips is useful to me at the very moment um and so happy to happy to have shared this one today um I do have an off-topic tip, but if you came in just for, uh, you know, the five minutes, um, it's clearly at least five minutes at this point. So do all the things, send a text or a, a letter to your mom, uh, let her know to join the show. Um, and uh, here's my off-topic tip. Um, so Hayden, you may recall, I, I know you know that I, uh, I coach a cross-country and track team. Um, and one of the uh, things that I, I pretty much insist on all of my runners is that they do some exercises that take no time out of their day at all. It's exercises anyone can do and you don't even need, you don't need any time, zero seconds to do these exercises. Um, we refer to them as the brushing your teeth exercises. Everybody on the team gets a post-it note that they put on their bathroom mirror and here they are. So while you're brushing your teeth, you're able to do, you know, a left foot heel rise, a right foot heel raise, rotate your ankles out, rotate your ankles in. You can read the list yourselves. Um, the great thing is you can also do them during Apex Instant Tips. It doesn't yeah. take you any time at all. And theoretically, uh, you've got the time right there to just go ahead and do these. In fact, I'm going to start doing them during all of our tips and um, give people a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not, it's not at all distracting. <laughs> Um, but of course, the only one you're distracting if you're doing it during brushing your teeth is probably yourself. 
Um, That's right. So that right there is my off topic tip um, that my team, um, I'm, I'm not sure that anyone on my team would ever watch uh, Apex Institute tips, but if they do, um, they will certainly get a kick out of that. So this, this team is, they're sticking with so many curls of wisdom from you, not least the, um, I'm, uh, I'm giving Michelle, Michelle's looking for a, a demo. This is your demo, Michelle. <laughs> Sorry, Hayden, I interrupted you. What, what, what was it? Well, I, I recall that they were also the recipients of your um, uh, pearl of wisdom about turning a cookie into a straw. Yes, yes, they have. Uh, that was that I've, I've shared that with the team as well. So um, lots of overlap. So much overlap between Apex Instant Tips and coaching cross country. Um, all right. Well, that's all I have, I guess, until next week. Um, if you liked the video, like the video. Yep. Like and subscribe, and uh, have a great weekend. Bye-bye.